Hey YouTube, so today we bring you a special episode dedicated to the golden retrievers of the world. So golden retrievers all around the world, whether you're a dark golden retriever like Mango here, or whether you're one of the lighter golden retrievers, we love you all the same. Mm -hmm. Literally, golden retrievers, they are a beautiful, yeah. kind, loving, sometimes Tigger-esque breed. And I have to say, I've never met possibly such a joyous dog, such a happy dog and mm -hmm. such a goofy dog. She's a yeah. very goofy dog. And so what we thought we'd do is dedicate an entire episode to what would be our top tips on training golden retrievers and really unlocking, you know, those real life results, that freedom that you want with your dog when you have a golden retriever. So. First off, we're gonna talk about anchors. I have got Mango anchored right now, and you guys might be like, anchored? That sounds terrible. What is anchored? Well, she's anchored to a boundary. She is on a lead, actually. She doesn't have to be on a lead. I've got her on a lead in case you wanna see some lead walking, because I've got a feeling with a golden retriever you might want to, and lead walking is a big real deal, mm -hmm. isn't it, Fandango? Um, and so, for me, having a dog anchoring to a bed really is effectively a form of target training. We've target trained the bed, so yeah. that Mango actively likes being in a place. Because actually, one thing Mango found quite hard um, initially was just to settle and just to be able to be still, especially when the household was busy. Yeah. So if anything was going on in the household, she found this part of her day-to-day -day quite difficult. Yeah. So teaching a boundary, teaching an anchor, that is my top tip number one for a golden retriever. Now, the second tip is that actually there's a level of... They've got to mature, and what you might find is every breed kind of develops and matures at a different rate. And you might actually find that for her brain and her body to start coordinating it themselves together and communicating with one another, that might take a little bit longer she than with other breeds. It's certainly slower maturing than, let's say, a Jack Russell Terrier. Yeah. She's certainly slower maturing than any of my Border Collies. So she's definitely been a slower maturing dog. That doesn't make it right. Mm -hmm. That doesn't make it wrong. That makes it how it is. So golden yeah. retrievers, we're not saying every dog is exactly the same, but as a rule, slightly slower slower maturing. Now with that in mind, I think being very black and white and very patient along the way has been really, really important. Lead walking, jumping up, consistency, manners training, and actually really growing the dog in front of us for what she's intended to be. Now most golden retrievers, very, very lovely, happy, active family pets. Yeah. Mango's a working golden retriever. You might have a working golden retriever or you might have um, more like the, the, the paler show type golden retrievers. Both it can be equally exuberant yeah. both can be equally interested a gun dog by trade and yet actually a very happy sweet easygoing pet by nature but don't be fooled there's a hunting instinct in there and it's a strong one isn't it mango it's a very strong one so she would happily hunt the big birds and she would happily hunt the big animals and she definitely has a nose on her so one next top tip for me would be actually be careful when you turn that hunting switch on. She's definitely a dog that once she's seen birds go up or she's scented a deer or she's scented some sort of badger or animal, she'll be looking. So actually teaching a really, really reliable recall and some yeah. nice loose leash walking can be handy because quite often out on a walk, we might pop her back on a lead or we might recall her away from something knowing that that little hunt nose can come on yeah. at any time. Next tip is to put some value and some, I guess, some intention and some training time. It doesn't have to be a long time, but there needs to be some focus spent there on teaching your golden retriever not to jump up. They go from being very small to very big very quickly, and they're so exuberant, they're like the dog equivalent of Tigger. Now, what we've got for you below this video are two really cool resources. The first is a video of us working with Mango and you get to see how we worked on her jumping up and the strategies that actually led her to not jumping up from being what was a, an explosive jumper upper, right? And, and I mean, with Tigger Springs in yeah. her hocks. And then the second thing that we've got for you is a an ebook or a playbook, as we like to uh, think of it, of games and strategies to transform your dog's jumping up that we made for you. It's our gift to you, and the link is below this video in the description as well. 
Now, my last tip for you, and this has been a long-standing one and it's taken a little bit of consistency, and I am using some of Mango's dinner for this because Mango has ditched the bowl, so we don't have a bowl and we do have lots and lots of her dinner in this way, is actually lead walking. Mm -hmm. And leash walking has been, lead or leash, whatever you say, has been, Mango, has been an important part of Mango's journey. So on lead, some of our rules are that actually um, you, don't, you don't go ahead without me going ahead. So actually, when we walk, we walk together. Um, if I stop still, I expect her to stop. I don't need her to sit, but sometimes she will choose to sit. Other times, especially if I've got food on me, uh, she'll say, she says, no, I'm not choosing to sit. I don't fancy sitting at all. Um, and so for me, it might be walking uh, and actually just stopping a little bit of pace change. So actually, can I walk a little bit quicker? Uh, can I slow it down a little? She said she'd like a drink and that's okay. So we'll let her have a drink at the same time here. What I would say is absolutely 100%. She said, yep, yeah, at the bar bar is good 100% lead walking and working with mangoes lead walking has been really important in terms of actually turning what could be a daily pain and a daily struggle into really a, a quite a nice strength yeah. she'll walk for hours on the bridle pass she'll walk for hours on the moored moors both on lead and off lead mango it's probably enough. I know, I know. It's very nice. But actually, just that walk with me has been a really nice... It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. I recently went on holiday and I loved some of the guys that they said, it's a pleasure. And it is a pleasure, right? Like, it's a pleasure when you walk like this together. So that makes life easy. For me, one of the rules is that there's always like a U in her lead. So there's always a bit of a shape in her lead. Even if sometimes I have to make that lead a little bit bigger because she's on a double lead. And there's lots of our YouTube videos you can watch on the games we play to get to the stages of loose leash walking. But ultimately, for me, loose leash has been a massive part of Mango's yeah. um, journey. And so below this video, we've got another gift for you, all of you golden retriever owners out there. And there is a link to get a free, totally free gift from us and um, playbook on stopping your dog from pulling on lead and the strategies and tools and games that we might use to train that outcome in a 100% reward-based and games-based way. Now, that was this episode of Absolute Dogs TV. If you have not already subscribed to the YouTube channel, make sure to do so. Download and watch the resources that we've linked. Make sure you share Share this to all other golden retriever and their relatives lovers like yeah. literally the relatives and the crosses please please share it because we know that this makes a difference to dogs worldwide yeah. so dogs like mango all over the world whether they're pale whether they're dark whether they're friends and relatives please share it Remember, game changers, whatever the dog owning struggle, there's a game for that. If you haven't already, remember to subscribe to our channel. And check out our new 25 day online dog training challenge. Watch the videos, play the games, transform your dog owning struggles. As a loyal YouTube subscriber, you can get a 70% discount through the link in the description below. And if you haven't already, subscribe to the number one most transformational dog training podcast on iTunes and Spotify, the Sexier Than a Squirrel podcast. And remember, to follow us on Facebook and Instagram for more live teaching, video content and free training using the links in the description.